All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the stream. Um, I missed last week due to some trainings I was giving on decoupled Drupal. And then on Sunday, I didn't stream because it was Easter Sunday. So I was doing some family stuff. Um, but I'm ready to get back into it. And today we will be, I lost my mouse. I'm trying to find my mouse. There we go. So I'm going to be picking back up my Drupal Rector contributions. Um, right now, Drupal Rector is at is using Rector 0.7. And just for those who maybe this is their first time coming in, um, Rector is a tool that refactors your, um, your PHP code. So you write rules and it reads code and says, ah, I found that. And then it modifies for you and refactors it. So we're working to get it upgraded from Rector 0.7 to 0.10. And we're so close. We're so close. Um, worked through a few bugs, but we now have a lovely issue where it's parsing all these files without problem. Um, but where we last left off is I could not figure it out. When it inspected the browser test base get mock rule, um, this one trait is not found. The session test trait, the problem is that it does exist. Um, in the pull request, let me get to it. In the pull request, like the files there, the auto loader, files in directory, we see here, rector testing, web core test, Drupal test, session test trait. But somewhere in the stack, it's just coming up as not found. Um, it's not auto loading. I don't know why. So that's going to be the next step is figuring this out. So thanks for tuning in and I hope you have fun while we go down the rabbit hole. Um, so I'm actually not going to be working inside of my rector environment. I set up a Drupal site that has rector installed with my fork. Um, you see here the, I have it pointing to my fork at Bluehorn Digital, which is my company, and to my development branch. Um, I've got my rector.php config set up in here, which when you install it, you copy over. And I've set up rector as a run configuration. So it's saying, you know, here's my binary file. Um, I've already set it up to run at a specific uh, test item. So I'm calling process and it's pointing to that error, that, that file that's just not cooperating. Um, I'm doing a dry run because that way it doesn't fix the file if it ends up working and I can just keep rerunning it. And I've turned on debug and the X debug flag. This little otherwise um, rector will turn off X debug for you to improve performance. But when you pass this flag, X debug connections to continue working. So that way you can well debug it. Um, all right, so I've got that set up and just for real good measure, let's do a, we're going to do a composer update. This is a, um, let's see, we got Drupal eight built with the Drupal recommended project. Um, I don't have it on nine because the idea is that right now Drupal rector doesn't really support nine. So we want to, oh, it was an update. Um, so we want to make sure that we're testing on eight and then in another issue, we'll get Drupal nine support added. So that way we can get ready for Drupal 10 readiness. Um, all right. So we're composer update. There was a commit changed. I don't remember what changed. So I'm going to go back to the commits. Um, so it was at DCBFF. So must add PHP suffix. Um, oh yeah, I did find a bug where with the file extensions, we weren't including the PHP suffix. So it was, ex before it wasn't running anything. Um, it was only checking dot module dot theme. So we had to add the dot PHP to the default configuration. And this is mostly just testing for, what do you want to call it? In GitHub Actions. So, all right, it's so nothing really changed. Last time I worked in this was March 19th, which I don't know about anybody else, but that was three, two, nine days ago. It feels like it was two months ago. Um, it's just April's been a long month so far. Um, so let's run this. 
And you can see here by using the PHP storm built in runner, it took my PHP interpreter, executed the binary process command, and it's going to run against this test file, which I will open. So that way you know what's going on in here. So in test functional, so what it's going to do is you'll see here this git mock when I hover over it, it says method git mock is deprecated. So the rule is going to take this mock and convert it to um, whatever's the fix here. If I actually look in the rector, yeah, Mark, you're right. We're going to go down the rabbit hole and you know, the sad part is, I've been down this rabbit hole so many times due to PHP stay and Drupal that I'm not even like phased. I'm like, oh, whatever. So we got to X debug the entire static analysis stack of PHP stem. Um, so the, the problem here is we're trying to inspect the browser test base code and convert git mock to create mock. Um, the difference is that I believe this was something added beforehand and create mock is more in line with later versions of PHP Unix. But, um, you know, Rector would automate fixing this code for us. But for some reason in browser test space, there is, um, somewhere. Sorry. That's so we, we got the error here. Um, so it's session test trait. Why is there? So there's two of them. One is the deprecated version in simple test. One's in core. And it's attached to the functional test setup trait. And I don't know if this is the issue. It shouldn't be because PHP stand doesn't break. So that's the other part. I know that when I, when I analyze this with PHP stand and PHP stand Drupal, it does not break. But for some reason, when we're using Rector, which uses PHP stand under the hood, it does break. And the only difference is that PHP stand has an auto loader that mimics Drupal's auto loading, whereas Drupal Rector does not. Um, so I don't know if that's part of the cause. And that's what we're going to try to figure out here. Um, so yeah, it goes all the way down to uh, figure out, you know, it goes in the PHP stand and it can be hard to debug. You might be able to do this in VS code. I know VS code handles FARs, you know, the, the PHP archives differently, but Rector's a FAR and PHP stands a FAR and director FAR is calling PHP stand to do things. And it is just a big, you know, it spirals. It's, it's not just a rabbit hole you go down. It's kind of like a spiral. It's a tube. You just keep, keep going. Uh, so we're going to try and um, get to the next steps here. So last week, I forgot, I didn't do a full live stream, but I did hop on quick to just demo doing a X debug session with a CLI tool. So I do have some breakpoints and this node scope metadata decorator. So I'm just gonna hit debug. That's the, the green little bug here. Trigger X debug and let's see where we, we end up. Um, with this X debug breakpoint. I would love to get this finished because once this is unblocked, we can then add Drupal 9 support and then the whole Drupal 10 readiness system is ready to go. Um, we'll have PHP stand Drupal is ready, which means the upgrade status module is ready. So we can start identifying compatibility issues and deprecations, but getting Drupal Rector updated would help automate all of those fixes. And that's the, you know, that's the goal here. Um, so we have nodes. And so for who, for those who have not gone through PHP parser and the abstract syntax tree, nodes are what make up this file. So I'm gonna go hand in hand and help you walk and walk through it with you so that way you understand it more and maybe it's gonna unlock the, the solution. So we have nodes and you can see we have the statement namespace. We have the namespace here and then, so the name and the at oh, the parts. So we have Drupal test, rector examples, functional. So that's the namespace. Um, we had the statements. We have our two use statements. It's great. 
And then we have our class. Um, I'm gonna quick look at the attributes. That's just the start. So, right, it, it reads it like a tree. We had namespace as the root. In, in the namespace, there's the to use statements, and now we have our class. Um, you know, class, the name here, you'll see browser test mock. Um, cannot get that property. If you look at the attributes even, like start line is eight. Yep, that's eight. Token position is 19. That, I don't know where the 19 comes in exactly, because um, that would be like right there. Um, for those who maybe followed along with my PHP stand bugs, we had one where traits, there was a trait that was broken due to PHP 8 support and parsing of optional attributes. So when I said I've been down this rabbit hole before, I went all the way down because there was a bug in PHP parser, which can create the abstract, abstract syntax tree. Um, so I, I feel like I halfway know what's going on here. Um, it's a very complex subject. So unless you really want to learn it, don't. Just don't. Um, all right, so we've got our class and it says it extends um that's not a property we can read parts so it knows that we extend a certain class and if we dive into it more at the it shows all the statements so the first statement would be for our simple example and then here another class method is the name of string so what happens with this is the the parser reads these and then inside of rector or rather php stand which has an analyzer and a broker it would say oh i had this class it extends something well we should go analyze the thing it extends oh it uses these traits well let's go find those traits and it kind of keeps going on and on and on so that's where we're going to go to the php stand node scope resolver and we're going to process the nodes um, we just went through all the nodes. The smart file info is something that's part of the, it was in Rector, then it got moved to the Simplify organization. I'm guessing it's kind of like how the Drush team has consolidation and consolidation is a bunch of tools for various CLI programs. Um, so let's step into here. So now we're inside of the PHP stand node scope resolver, which is code in Rector that's integrates with PHP stand. Um, so this remove deep chain method call nodes. Let's just step in node traverser add visitor. I don't, let's just back out of that. Um, our nodes are still the same. So let's look at the scope. Um, actually real quick, I want to put a breakpoint here. So when you create breakpoints, you can add conditions. Um, and I don't want this to stop at every single um, time we hit this part. So I'm going to, nope, not copy the name. I'm gonna copy the value. And in here we'll do smart info file, get file name. And if the file name is equal to browser testmock.php. So if I run this on anything else, it won't break until we hit that file. So now I've got a shortcut to get back here um, so let's look at the scope and I like to think of that as like my breadcrumbs, right? Hansel and Gretel dropping breadcrumbs because I'll end up going deep into all of this and need to come back to it. But your breakpoint might get hit for things that you don't care about. And by using the conditions, you can you know, set the right kind of breadcrumbs along your way. Um, so the scope is a mutating scope in the analyzer. We've got the scope context. Um, this is just used to parse the files. So we've got a node callback, um, which I'm going to drop a breakpoint here because I just want that to hit whenever it runs. So for each node as node, which we look again, nodes, we've got the one file resolve dependent files. So this might be where we start going to the, oh, it extends this. Oh, it extends that. Hey, it has a trait. Um, so let's see where this goes. So configuration is cache enabled. Resolve the files. Okay. Oh, so maybe if you have 
caching, this actually loads the cached files and dependencies aren't things that are extended. Um, okay, I was wrong in my first assumption. So node scope resolver, process nodes, which that's exactly what we want. We want to start processing these nodes. So we're gonna step in. Um, I wanna see if there's a way we can breakpoint here easily, but it's not looking like it. So let's go through node count should be one. Um, so statement result. I have a feeling this is going to, I'm just gonna put a breakpoint so we can see. Um, all right, let's go in. So if statement is instance of throw or return, which it's not, else if it's static and not a for each and not a global. So what is our statement right now? We have the scope, the statement is namespace with all the sub statements, so process statement, their annotation. Um, so does this do, this gets all the comments to find that. Okay, well, we have no comments, so that's fine. If it's a class method, nope, we're at the namespace. So now we're gonna start probably going into like a bunch of recursiveness, right? We're at the top level, then we need to go down. We need to go down and down and down. Um, so let's do, let's step into the node callback. If scope is in trait, traversing trait inside a class that is using its scope from reference, the trait traversed by rector is different. Directly parsed from file. Like, I feel like this comment makes me feel like there's a bug. So I put a breakpoint here immediately inside, in, because if our scope is inside of a trait, um, the class reflection is resolved after entering to class node, so we need to get it from the first one after. Um, if statement node, resolve dependent files. Okay, so this is where it gets recursive, right here, inside this callback. Um, so I'm just gonna step over. So scope. So if statement is clear, all right, so statement name is not equal to null, which it's not. We have um, all these parts. Enter namespace, statement to string. So let's, so there's this global scope inside PHP parser, or not PHP parser, but inside of PHP stand. So now we're saying that we're entering this namespace. Um, and the scope is what gets passed along so you'll see here, we're inside of this, where's the top of this? Else if for each, no, for each, somewhere in this process statement node, we're now in this thing where it's gonna keep looping through and we're gonna go farther down. So we enter the same space and now we're processing the statement nodes. We have the original statement and we have the statement statements, which like I showed before, the statement statements include the use, the to use and the class. Um, so let's pop down into here. So we, we our parent node is the namespace and we're gonna be in the class. We're gonna loop through each statement and then here we go again, the statement result. Um, I'm just gonna put another breakpoint so statement result after analyzing, we get the mutated scope. Um, let's see, I'm gonna change. So we have each statement in the statement. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna adjust this to say um, that statement is instance of 
P PHP parser parser node statement. So I want this to hit when we get to the statement result, which is nice because then I can hit play and I don't have to go through the for each over and over and over again. Because I know this begins to break once we analyze the class and then go into the class it extends. And, you know, I could be, I'm possibly going extremely verbose, but before I did a quick debug and it didn't get me anywhere. So I'm just going all in right now. Um, so now we've got the process statement node. Then we go into the annotation. There is no annotation. Um, so if it's a class method, now we go into the node callback. We're not in the scope trait yet. We're now, we're getting the scope for the class. That's our class name. Um, it gets the reflection. Ooh, this is it. PHP stand. Um, I'm dropping a. If instance of strings match. Resolve class or interface scope. I want to. One second. Um, let's collapse the debugger. And it's favorites. Resolve class or interface dependent files. So traits are technically classes. Um, so it should hit this, but I notice that there's a trait node scope collector. It looks like nothing's in here quite yet, um, but that looks like it might be, this might be something interesting. So we're gonna step over. We got the class reflection. Um, so like what's happening here is like the class reflection for that trait is breaking. Um, so let's step over. So if statement instance of that has yield, so statement namespace name, class reflection, we got back class scope, the mutating scope for this inside this namespace in the class which now we're going into the node callback, class statements gatherer, this process statement nodes. Oh, man. Um, and then further on, we get the properties constants. All right, I'm gonna step into here. All right, where's our statements? So class method, when does it try to find the extension? I'm gonna just click play and see what happens. Oh, okay, great. That didn't catch any breakpoints. I just wasted a bunch of time. Um, so this returned an error. I guess one thing we could do, I don't know if I can edit this file because it's in a far. Oh, sweet. Um, let's do try. We're gonna, we're gonna try this approach, catch. Throwable. For those who didn't know, um, with PHP 7, um, let me see. Yep, with PHP 7, throwable is like the base thing that all exceptions and errors um, extend upon. So you can catch all fatal errors um, with a try catch. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm done playing around. We're going to debug this. We're gonna catch it on the error and just go back in the stack trace. Oh, okay. It's gonna take a minute to hit. Come on. There we go. Um, no, I wonder if I was even too early there. So I'm gonna just no add visitor cloning, cloning, cloning. I'm just gonna 
Move my breakpoint. I'm gonna hit play. I'm removing this for now, and I'm gonna move that breakpoint and that one. I'm gonna keep that one. And now we should get the, it didn't stop. It didn't break on that. Um shoot, thought that would have done it. So we've got here trait exists in PHP stand far file type mapper. Let's see. Um great, this loaded actually. So it's happening. So that's the other part that's like wild to me is it's supposed to do a continue, but instead it's throwing an error. Um, trait exists, uninitialized. Um, I'm gonna drop a breakpoint here and we'll just kind of see what happens. Um, well, we know what will happen, but I'm gonna copy this trait name and see if I can just make it a conditional debug in case it hits a few times. So, yeah, so in here, it the trait won't even load, so it won't try to get a reflection and try to load the file, um, which is weird. And that makes, oh, that's not it. Okay, so it only ran the once functional test setup trait. So it died there. It died before it even got to trying to find this setup trait. Um, all right, well, I'm going to rerun this. It's going to take forever and a day. And we'll figure out where, why, it, it never even went back. That's the thing that's odd to me is it never went, we didn't even hit it for the next step. I'm sorry it's taking so long. There we go. Just as everybody knows when you have X debug running. Well, with, Oh shoot. Yeah, I don't have Xdebug 3 locally, I don't think. So that's why. Um What? I didn't even That wasn't even the trait name. Like it just broke right off the bat. Um, so I'm going to try to think of some new ideas while we go, while that runs. Um, I thought maybe it was due to the auto load paths, but I found it in there. Um, when we look at, let's going to look at core. I know with, um, with, PHP send Drupal, I had to execute the bootstrap.php, which um, core runs. So let's see. So trait name is functional test setup trait, right? Like that's that's that. Dependent files, browser test base. I stepped over it and it died. So let's step in. Okay, class. Let's step in. Let's go through composer. So if class map authoritative or is set missing classes. Oh. So the class map is authoritative. There's no missing classes. Class map. All right. Oh. Shoot. 
man, hold on. I'm on I let me look at what does it say? Um config that I dump the autoloader a certain way. So class map authoritative or is set missing classes. So when it's authoritative, I think it prevents it from doing a further lookup. So let's see. Auto loader, if it's set loaded class. Segments. Functional test trait. Let's see here check is what is this dot um well is set segments i plus one the namespaces so the namespace isn't registered because it's not in composer and the class map is coming back as authoritative. So if we step through, check is zero, find file. Well, it found the file. I don't know how it got to there. Um, if we do less, okay. So we've, we've got it. Include file, file, great. So now it tries to find the session test trait. All right, so the bug wasn't even in Rector. Um, I'm gonna just make a comment here. Then I'll forget. Um, I'm gonna give an update. update. The bug isn't in, in rector or php stand when what was the i'm going to copy the reference when is loaded via trait exists then the session test trait is also loaded this is what causes a failure trying to load the trait in a trait because not try at um, all right making a note so now um this fine file let's step through again it's false step down loaded segments so now it's trying to find the file the class so we got class session test trait um oh so now it went to the other auto loader that's okay so i don't know what file we're in there's the two auto loaders there's the rector one and then there's the Drupal one. So it did a fallback. So now we're in the Drupal one because we know about Drupal component, the Drupal one. And let's see here. I'm going to scroll through missing classes. That's all rector, Drupal core. All right, that's not it. That's rector core. Those are all misses. Um, Those got hit, but why? All right, well, well, I'm gonna stop assuming and just walk through. So this find file with extension, logical PSR4, oh man, I think we've gotta like, we've gotta improve the auto loader because it doesn't know how to find this. Um, first, cause it's still looking for file with extension. So subpath, Drupal test. Yeah, this, this doesn't work. So path end. 
S trace if file exists directory is looking for it inside the code sniffer which file doesn't exist so I guess we fall back it's gonna do PSR 4 and it just doesn't work include pass false so if false false takes it as a missing class return file Um, let's see if it shows up in here. It's not inside there. Oh my God. How many autoloaders are there? In Laminas. Um, all right. Just, you gotta be kidding me. Consistency. And why is there so many auto loaders? And then it died. Okay. Well, I know where we're going. I'm just going to close everything out. So we're supposed to have these auto load paths automatically work, um, but it doesn't. So, um, one thing that we had to do that I had to do in PHP sand Drupal is I'm going to go to it. Oh, PHP sand Drupal. Um, so inside of our Drupal auto loader, which is actually in source Drupal, Drupal auto loader. So what this file does is it's a static file that tries to mimic the bootstrap of Drupal and discovery not hard or complicated at all and one thing it had to do is add all the test name spaces to the autoloader and say given Drupal's path these are the namespaces that map to Drupal um, for some reason appending them here to this autoload paths is not good enough I don't know why, and I don't know what changed, um, but that seems to be the case. Um, so one thing I'm going to try doing is, let's see, um, get extension namespaces, populate the class loader, um, So here's what we'll do in rector. I'm just going to do what did I what did I call in PHP sand Drupal? Um, require once this Drupal root. There we don't have this um, flag defined. It's a feature I want to add after. Um, previously with um, rector, the configuration was YAML files, and it moved to PHP files. So that's why there's there's like a bunch of different config based on core, like your Drupal root. We'll be able to get it to be one config file um, and dynamically determine where Drupal is located. But for all intents and purposes here, actually, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to do, and it's web core tests bootstrap.php. I'm just going to click run. We're going to see what happens. Um, I guess the worst part with requiring this is it does adjust the default time zone, but it sets up some aliases that core uses. Um, and again, it sets up all of the namespaces for tests, um, which fix traits. Wait, exited with code zero. Well, that's better than an error, but it should have, it didn't report anything back. Um, let's do an X debug. So let's step over. That worked. Um, I'm gonna hit play. So it didn't die, 
but it also didn't report anything back and that's what concerns me um because it should have been a dry run and it should have said something about this so debugger no traverser add visitor let's traverse the nodes step over parsed statements and tokens tokens by like we never got this far um refactor nodes with rectors that for each no errors um step over so this print file info um, file is not removed the old contents were git mock oh man new content git mock wait no that's old new content git mock it didn't run the rules um Right, because it's supposed to be create mock, so that means it didn't do didn't do what it's supposed to do. Um, let's step over. Because of JSON path. I'll put format as console. This report. This report port file diffs this file diffs was there, there's no file diffs report errors this errors there's no errors um rector is done um well, that's a bummer that didn't work as i was expecting so i'm going to try to just run it directly bin, um bin Rector process. What was it? It's um, web modules. Rector examples, test source. I'm going to close these because I want to open it and then I can revert it. Test source functional. We'll turn on debug. So it didn't run, but it didn't break. And I don't understand why it didn't run. Um, so let's see here. Um, vendor. We're going to try another approach. It didn't crash. Palantir net. Source. Rector. This git mock rector. Um, from git mock base. So in the node types, it's method call, parent class name. Let's, I'm going to drop a breakpoint here and run it. And we should catch on this class call. Um, like refactor, what, what makes it be called? That's the good question. Um, like, I don't know if this gets called on everything. No types. Maybe it just gets called on every method call. And then you have to check, like, oh, should I actually run or not? Um, I'm assuming that's the case. So I'm gonna, there's no good breakpointing in here anymore. So I'm going to hit play. And it didn't even run the rule. Um... It didn't analyze the file. What is... Um, 
I'm even going to drop a breakpoint here. So we we fixed the one crash, but we didn't fix. It's not processing that file, and I wonder if it wouldn't even process anything else. In that case, um, geez. Change nodes with vectors, apply posts. So we're gonna, I'm gonna drop the line here. We're gonna debug it. I put a debug statement in git mock base to make sure that the rules even constructed, right? That the rules in the service provider for rector and a breakpoint here when it refactors the nodes with rectors. Um, yeah, so dynamic source locator paths. Oh, let's go back here. So PHP file infos, right? Browser test mock, great paths. It's a path to it. Um, let's jump in. File processor refactor. I'm just going to drop a breakpoint there. So, it's going to rector our file. Step into it. Make sure file is parsed. Return. Wait a second. Oh, well, the parse statements and tokens went a little bit too fast there so new statements why does this have as, as a new that's a new what's the old oh whoa wait this refactor other touched file that's affected files So maybe, oh, maybe it has the new and old already set so that way it can compare them. So file node, press the node, go back in the statements, the file info, result rector node traverser traverse file node. So this prepare node visitors, they're prepared. Oh boy. Um, so we have to go through every, okay. This visitors, we have 49 visitors, Drupal Rector. These are all the ones that we configured. Um, hold the phone. One second. Um, now this looks to be in the right, order as the files and there's something i'm noticing missing and that's why it didn't do anything rector db so we've got db db date 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 time okay so it's not in alphabetical order we got date time storage do we have browser um can i start Oh, that's too hard to go through. Um, I think I found one of our problems, maybe. Um, shoot. So visitors, DB insert, render rector, render root, URL, Drupal L, real path, entity create, format, date, node load, user load, daytime, daytime, daytime. Um, all of these were instantiated, but not browser test. Okay. Dang it. Um, all right. We're going to just drop a breakpoint at return true there. So to recap, I'm closing up my files. It was looking at all the visitors, but I did not notice this browser test base git mock rector in the configuration. Um, so I'm going to do a find. 
You gotta be. Um, so by doing this search, it's only in the rector rules document. Oh no, don't break on me under. So all 50 rectors overview. It's not actually in any configuration. So that's why it didn't run. So we fixed the test failure, but it didn't do anything because it's not actually configured. Um, and here, so does this say when it was the change record? Oh, I don't want to open Chrome. I want to open it in Brave because that's my personal browser. When was this deprecated? 8.4. So we're going to add it to the... Hey, look at that. There's no 8.4 deprecations. So in the original, so I, I was taking work from Thomas's um, original pull request, maintainer of rector. And 8.4, the file was deleted. Oh. Man, it's right there. I didn't even notice it. Does this have a .php version? It doesn't. During his rebase, could you add it? All right, so what we're going to do is... Um, I guess I'm going to copy... I'm going to create it here and then copy it over into the document repo. Um, so what's here browser test base mock rector we've got the kernel base test rector i'm so sad right now because I just wasted that other bit and I, I didn't notice that comment from the last post request so we've got this, we've got an 8.4, um, all deprecations, this, let's run the debugger. This, <laughs> so now all that rabbit hole to fix the autoloader to find out that the rule doesn't even exist um, or is processed. I, I feel like somehow there is an easier way to get here but I don't know what it was. Um, so yeah, whatever. As long as we get it, that's all I care about. So if I keep hitting play. Something finished with exit code zero. It's supposed to, um, hold on. I want to make sure this got loaded. It got loaded. It added these. Um, they get added a few times for some reason. That's a services configurator. It didn't. I'm slightly concerned because this instructor didn't get invoked. Um, but it seems like the other Let's get, I'm going to rule definition. I want to see if these get their base class. Oh, refactor with nodes. Um, I'm going to step in, file processor refactor. I don't remember where those. The, um, I think I got a little too excited. Um, so I guess, oh, could that be why? Because it's not implementing the right interface. Get mock base abstract rector. Nope, it should because it's implementing that. Um, I'm going to close. I like to just close up all my tabs because it kind of like frees up my brain. And then as I hit breakpoints, they come back. Um, 
Well, we know for sure we're missing that 8.4, so I'm copying it with the keyboard and going to the um, to this, and I'm going to paste it and say add. But I put it in the wrong area, Drupal 8. Um, let that pause, and I'm going to I'm going to commit it. What do I have going on with tests? Oh, that's just some stuff I was doing locally. I'm going to say add missing. 8.4 deprecation, deprecation, director rules, config. I'm just gonna push that. Because that way it's one less thing I'll accidentally forget when I get to putting it over there. Um, so let's hit play, play, so false, right? File URI deprecation, target, or what's the, this visitors has file node rectors enabled return false this visitor and if visitor instead of so nothing has file node rectors okay so that's just the file node wait Run file node only if am I refactor nodes? Am I missing something here? Non PHP file infos status code zero. I feel like I'm missing something. I'm going to run it here. Wait. What? Um. So populate class loader. This is all we need is this part. So maybe I'm just gonna copy this instead of all the extra stuff it does. Uh, and we know our auto loader is not, oh, it's a vendor. Vendor. Just try that out and see. Um, we're going to find extension directories, get extension name. This gets all the namespaces in a special trait namespace oh, man. i just don't understand why this auto load pass doesn't seem to be working um, as expected and why it changed um so we're gonna just i'm gonna delete that and we're going to i'm going to run it against this folder you dry run and see if it it's not even saying like the file that it's parsing that's the problem all right so it's parsing it um Okay, uncaught PHP unit version dependent test compatibility trait cannot be located in source. I know that error. That's the error that we were having with PHP stan, but that should be fixed. Um, I 
all all the Drupal test traits are the the, the headache. Um. So what do we got going on here? It's saying Drupal tests. Oh, I'm a. Uh, that's why. Um, it's not in this directory. It's in. So that's my bad. Um, let's go back to where's core? Where's core? Web core test bootstrap. Um, directory. No, I want. So it's saying that it's inside of the current directory. Right. Yep. So it's web core tests. Okay. That's my fault. I didn't change these directories. Um, test tools. Do I have the PHP stand still open? Yeah. So I have add test namespaces. And this finds all the test namespace. Oh, test namespaces. So yeah, I do the same thing here. Um, actually, I guess I do it a bit more direct. Oh, no, Drupal core test directories, test Drupal. Um, I, I'm going to so I'm gonna do exactly what I do with PHP stand. because that works. It works there. Test site is Drupal test site. Kernel test is Drupal kernel tests. Um, functional tests, yeah, straightforward. Functional tests, functional JavaScript. then test tools All right, let's try rerunning it and hopefully it works i'm going to cut out in 26 minutes because i'm going to go take advantage of the nice weather and go for a run um man now this can't be found. I'm going to copy, find it here. Why can't anything be found? Wait, no, this is supposed to be fixed. If the trait doesn't exist, which it doesn't, it aliases it for us. Oh. This is supposed to just work. This is what I fixed in PHP then when we're analyzing everything because it's a dynamic alias of um, inside test tools, it dynamically aliases the six or seven test compatibility trait. But we fixed this. Um... It's not in here. Um, all right, I'm going to see there's got to be more to test tools. I'm going to 
like hot feet. Odor add Drupal test test suites. Oh, need a double backslash there. And that was for test test suites. Um, shoot. The thing is that they should be, they're using the latest version of PHP stand too. So let's look at composer show PHP stand, PHP stand. 12.83, that has the fix in it. Why is this crashing here, but not in, in PHP stand Drupal? I mean, the only difference is that we manually, like I said, I manually include the auto loader. So I'm trying to get back to where it was. Require once. Add that, and then it was require, require once web core test bootstrap.php. Um, and that handles, it's going to duplicate that part of it. Extension roots that if I, no, if I rerun the process. So confused. And then it just dies. And nothing runs. So if we fix the auto loading, it doesn't do anything. I'm gonna run the debugger. Well, okay, that's good. It's being registered, so that's that's great. Um, so. And this is inside of rector that's the cached container okay so that's a good thing we know that this is being registered because it's the kernel test all right i'm happy with that things are getting registered at least i'm gonna look at the job run here add the missing rules and again we're just gonna see um that the test trait was not found. Um, all right, change nodes with rectors. <laughs> so in the file info, we're going to step into it, try catch wrapper, bump. Uh, phase this advance advances a progress so try so now it's the callback which is the file processor we want to refactor the file okay make sure file is parsed tokens by file path storage has for file this tokens by file path browser test space it is set okay so that's intended to make sure it's parsed which is weird because it just is a wrapper for that same thing so 
the old tokens. This is all of the parsed code. Function, simple example. New line, this uh, equals um, git mock. It's like that needs to change. So that sets the current statement. Run file node only if. Only if what? File node, let's go to traverse file node, prepare file visitors. The file visitors are prepared. So this says at this add visitor. This visitors, there's 52 visitors. Great. We have the browser test base gets mocked rector. Okay, we know that the visitors are there. If, so this, if has file rectors enabled, this is what's breaking it. Um, so I'm gonna copy this value and I'm making sure I set this breakpoint. So if file node, get file info, file name, name is equal to, it'll keep the breakpoint. So this is the bug. Has file node rectors enabled? I don't know what that means. So this visitors, we've got visitors. They wanna do stuff. So file node class. So like, I guess I get it. They don't work in the you know, they all go against like a function call, function call, yeah, like that makes sense. So that returns false. How do we get to here? I guess that's it. It's like we got the, the prepare node visitors, but we want, this traverse for all the other things. Oh, maybe that's because it's right here. So the result is zero, but here's the new statements. Um, I was looking at the wrong area. Okay, so yeah, the nodes are, has namespace is true. Return parent traverse. Okay, I guess we're getting somewhere now. Now that I my jets um for each visitor visitor before traverse i just want to jump to this area um all right traverse nodes is the array so we want to step in here so let's step in so do nodes for each eyes nodes. Were we here already? Um, so node, do nodes, the node is namespace. For each visitor, return is visitor, enter node, abstract. So we want to check if, okay, here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. So if this, instance of browser test mock generator. So I'm gonna hit play. We're here. Is matching node type. Node class is namespace. It is not. So we're gonna hit pay. Name, use, 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 name. Class, no, it's um, method call. Okay, we want to find method call sign property fetch variable identifier 
method call. Great, we're here. So now is a return true. I'm going to drag this breakpoint down here. So it says that this is the current rector. It's this node of git mock with these attributes. And the variable is this. And the arguments are is this class fetch. It's the class name as the argument. So set node should skip current node. Is node removed? Is node skipped? So it's not there. Recurse up until a statement is found since it might contain rector. I don't even. I lost track of where we are. Is node skipped by rector? We're going back into here. It's not skipped. Okay. Well, at least that we know of. Um, file info. So skip element. Oh, my word. That, okay. We didn't get there. So I'm going to drag my breakpoint down. That's one thing you can do in PHP Storm is you can drag your breakpoints. So original node, original node with attributes. Node this refactor. So... We're in git mock base. Now, now we're here. All right. So if this git name, node name, node name, git mock. All right. We're in here. Method arguments, method name. Turn new node. So node, the new name is create mock. So it, it, it's supposed to be working. So node, if it's not an instance of, node has changed. All right, so it's not recognizing the change, it seems like. There's something, I don't know what is going on. Um, so. All right, well, we know that it's working at some level. So has node changed? Node comparator, so mirror attributes. What are the attributes to mirror? Parent node and class node. I'm afraid to skip over anything. So it set the attribute name to previous. And the class name, method name. So this way it ensures that it has all the old attributes and we're just changing the name. Um, mirror attributes, update attributes. Okay, that's not it. Keep file. All right, I guess that's good there. Rector change collector, notified node file info. Oh, wait, I'm so, oh, so that's if node change. Okay, so we are in the node change and it's doing all the things it should. So current rector, add class with line. So we're getting this rector with line negative one. That doesn't seem right. Um, that's weird. Node get line node attributes. Um, I guess maybe that's something that's broken is it's not copying the start line properly when it renames. So maybe maybe there's more that has to be done to our rules and that's why it's coming back so if original node is instance of statement and node is instance of expression 
we return the node. So we've got the return here, which is our method call. And again, name create mock. So it's here, it's working. Like it did, it, it adjusted the abstract, abstract syntax tree, but it's not being applied. Oh, what's this? Ensure the replacement is reasonable. I'm putting a breakpoint. Okay, there's no exception there. Sub node is return. Return null. Um, just gonna. So <laughs> we're in the node traverser. <laughs> and for each visitor, we're cycling through each visitor. I'm gonna step up. And here's where it did the recursion. So if stop, leave node, what node are we in now? We're in the expression of create mock. Let's step up, up, and up. So node, are we now? The name is get create mock. The thing that bothers me is the fact these attributes are empty. Um, but it's still going. I'm so confused now. I'm so I'm I'm lost and um, print without comments. The node method call. The name is get mock. Content. Comment remover. Oh, so far down the rabbit hole that I don't even know right now. Um, node is create mock. We're we're back in here. How? Um, I'm gonna kick that breakpoint out. I'm trying to exit out of this, and I can't get out. Okay, here we go. We're getting out. So this refactor with nodes, PHP file infos, smart file system. This somewhere it was supposed to help find out. Like somewhere it reports this. Error and diff collector has errors. There's no errors. We output formatter, which is console, report, report file diffs, this file diffs. Oh, what? Now it's going to work? You got to be kidding me. We're going to hit play. But it didn't report anything. That's where I'm so confused. It, it aired out here. Um, so is this actually working? I'm going to remove the dry run. We're going to hit play or we're going to run it in the CLI. My head hurts. I don't know if anybody else's head hurts, but mine definitely hurts. All right. So it didn't, it didn't tell us anything, but it ran. Um, okay. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna revert some of these changes here. Oh, that one needs to stay. Um, I tried writing the tests here. Um, I'm going to add those and um, because I don't remember what they were. What was it? What did I have? What did I have to add here? 
I needed to add. Oh, that's the other part. I don't know if it's just that one or if it was all of them. Um, let me go back. So this was Git mock originally. I'm going to run this again. And just make sure, you know, this isn't the best fix, but if that's the fix it takes, I'll live with it. Um, our testing namespaces are kind of rough to work with. So exit code one. Oh, because I have it as a dry run. Darn it. Let me edit this. I'm going to turn off dry run. Or, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm just going to rerun it from the command line. I like having the PHP runner be a dry run. So that is one thing I found out. When you do a dry run, it returns exit code one unless it's a CI environment. All right, it's running. Like you saw it, it just changed from git mock to create mock. Um, we don't need all this extra stuff here. We just need to make sure that we include the PHP unit bootstrap. Now, the weird part is we're auto loading web core. So I don't, I don't know. Um, again, the way I figured that out or out rather is just, this is how I do it with, um, with PHP stand Drupal. Like this is the only way it works if I do it in PHP stand Drupal. So we're going to um, up, update all of these configurations. So as I brought up before about using the Webflow Drupal finder, um, right now we have these three configs and I don't want to fix it right now, but we need to, so that way this is all dynamic. We have just one rector.php. Um, change list, boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna leave the test actually out of it. Um, ensure we load the load the PHP unit unit bootstrap for test class auto loading. Um, commit. Um, I just want to I want to run this test. I don't want to commit it if I broke it. Um, this ensures that some things would run a test or that the applied rules run against things. It, it bootstraps rector and then executes it in a dry run. Um, so that way we can do like an integration auto loading test. Um, ideally this would be used to um, also test that create mock, but I had some other things that broke. So. Well, one thing I should do is I should copy this into here. Uh, we have fixtures, Drupal, web, core. Well, thanks for tuning in. Um, that was a doozy and a half. Great. We're going to um, that at, um, update integration test I'm gonna commit we're gonna push I just want to see the build results and then I'm gonna go I'm gonna sign off and go for a run um, all right let's refresh this and I'm gonna pop open each of these in a new tab to see the PHP unit should be pretty quick. One of these is going to be done pretty fast. So PHP stand analyze. Let's make sure I didn't break anything here. Um, if you're not using Composer 2, by the way, like it is fast. Like look, it took nine seconds to install um, our dependencies. That's done. Awesome. This to install a Drupal 8.9 site and the test fixtures took oh it took seven seconds why is this erroring 
oh shoot because we're requiring the auto loader inside of there um so i'm gonna comment that as i broke I'm just going to leave a comment. Let's, um, require what is director PHP unit. Um, this causes a bug. C. Just gonna add the comment. I'm pretty sure that's why that failed. Oh, but look at this. No way. Um, this was failing. So this ran. We got two failures though. Run against Rector. Where's the output? Why won't it ever show ran with exit code zero? But just gotta be kidding. Um the last time we ran that we got two passes. The last time we ran it, it would at least show So this means that this this test just means it ran, but it doesn't verify it. Um, debug. So before, at least, it showed all this parsing, parsing, parsing when it ran, but that didn't seem to be the case. Wait, local package functional test. With the dry run, and then it, I wonder if it's because of the dry run. The dry run returns an exit code of zero whenever it will. Um, gives an exit code of zero whenever it fails. If we look, or whenever the exit code of one means that there's changes, is what it means. It's in here somewhere. Um, rector, rector. Um, bin here, run, um, command, where's the process command? Oh, because that brought me to here. So let's go to source, console, command, process command. Um, so if inverse error code for CI dry run. So if it's a dry run, so if it's not a dry run, return success. And if there's no diff, so we we want um, we actually want that to return an exit code of zero. So cancel, don't move that. Um, so we local package um get up actions expect exit code one i think i have i uh, setting exit codes that's not what we want um i'm trying to think i have this somewhere Workflows, was it? It's like question mark, e, dollar sign, question mark. Ah, here we go. Um, so we're gonna copy that. So if it's equal to one, then true, else 
false. So we want exit code one to happen because we're processing against files that should have a change. Um, I'm gonna put a note, dry run in, is expected to return exit code one, one if there are changes, which we are ex expecting to happen here. Um, you know, I wonder if we should just remove the dry run, but I'll keep it and we'll see if this works. Um, expect dry run exit code one. And I'm going to commit that. And in that, sorry, I'm scrolling like a madman again. Inside test config. Um, I'm going to make a to do make this work this crashes php unit but fixes um drupal's test namespace auto load it's going to drop grammar to get it within the line um remove php unit bootstrap i'm still horrible at holding myself to my own like I'm going to be done at this time, but it's just so close that it's hard to walk away. So if this doesn't do it, I am going to walk away so I can get in a run. Oops. Refresh. Let's go to the conversation tab. Again, thanks everybody for tuning in. I hope we get it. And I want to give major thanks to Florida Drupal camp. Um, earlier I said, I was going to basically stop development of PHP stand Drupal because I didn't have any funding. Um, and it's a lot of work. So I hope this has shown like why I think it's a lot of work. Um, this isn't PHP stand Drupal, but it's the same problems. And they funded 20 hours of my time, um, with a $2,000 sponsorship. And I was able to get PHP stand Drupal and Drupal check ready with hours to spare. And instead of doing extra feature development there, because it, it works, it's good enough. Um, I use the remaining time to get Drupal Rector up to date because that is like a really important um, part of the Drupal major version upgrade infrastructure. So PHP unit passed, PHP stand passed, local package run is running. This is running the driver. This is the error prone. So just gotta wait for these to go through and see. One second. Uh, da -da, da -da -da -da. I'm texting my friend that I will be a little late to our meetup for the run. So that ran, no errors. That's good because before this was crashing. So this is actually running it. So it ran. Hey, look, it passed. Um, so we expect it to be error code one. So the good news is that if we got back error code 255, which is usually an error or error code zero, that would be the big red flag is if we got error code zero, that no changes. So the dry run verifies it. Now it's actually running it. And um, hopefully when it's done running, this diff that executes won't fail. It did. Um, oh, wait. I think, but it worked. Oh, shoot. It worked real good, I think. Um. Please delete the following comment after you've made necessary changes. You will need to use. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so it looks like it's working, but it deleted all the comments and it changed things up. So um, we need to review. 
I think we just need to review these failures. Um, Cause it didn't preserve any of the comments. So, or it, imp and it imported the usage. So, all right, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, I'm just gonna copy that. Oh. Thanks, Mark. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, you know, it's one of those that, one, I just enjoy doing this. I enjoy doing the live streaming and just showing how I work. But it's also like, if I'm gonna do open source work and take money for it, I want to contribute back more than just writing the code. Sorry, there's something on my camera. And, and I think this is it, you know, I don't know, not everybody's going to watch, not everybody's going to watch the recordings, but I, I was paid to do open source work, so why not make sure that information's out there instead of just me hacking on this at 11 o'clock at night? Um, I wanna record it and share it. Uh, I'm gonna make a comment. Come on, Dan Mark. Oh, Ah, Montgomery. Even though it's ah, okay, that's why it was auto complete differently. Looks like it's stripping out the comments and fixing the includes. So our our what is that called? It it, it does a diff of the generated versus the updated. Um, so our needs to be updated and verified the diffs are what we expect is this the job run no it's not um, copy this one c blah all right sorry that might have been loud i'm excited Great, so we're done. Well, we're not done, but it works. And now all we've got to do is just fix up some of these um, tests. So like if I were to copy this, and if I did a search, um, we can see here. So it's it's just deleting these, these comments, um, which I don't know if these comments are supposed to be persisted. Um, that's outside of my knowledge, but it's doing a simple, we'll say simple, like, it's adding the use statement. So we have to go through and, you know, do all that, but it's working and I'm happy. Um, I'll probably work on this on my own time and I'll be back streaming again on Sunday and Sunday I'll be working on simplytest.me. So that's the other project I'm working on trying to get over the, um, the hump. We're working on the Drupal 9 version, which has a React app. So if you're interested in React, Tailwind CSS, and just simply test me, I'll be doing that Sunday. I do it Sundays at 10 a.m. Central, which 10 a.m. CDT UTC is 3 p.m. UTC. So Sunday at 3 p.m. UTC, 10 a.m. Central is when I'll be doing this again. And thanks for tuning in, and I appreciate your support. Bye.